Let's start by defining our entry point. So probably you're used to defining the entry point as just main, but when you're writing graphical Windows application, you actually want to use the win main entry point. And the reason for that is that you get here a couple of additional parameters that you want to use. I'm going to scroll here a little down. I'm going to use the regular win main, not the w win main, because I'm just using the regular ASCII versions of all the functions here, just to keep it simple. But obviously, it's a better pattern if you're actually writing production code to use the Y character versions. And this is a good point to remind that this code is just going to be for fun and not going to be suitable for production. I'm going to skip a lot of error checking. This will be the signature of the function I'm going to use for the entry point. So let's start writing the code here. I'm going to start by including windows.h. This one I'm not going to use. I'm just going to call it a. This one as well. And the last one I'm going to use. First thing you want to do in the function is call register class. As you can see in the description right over here, you need to actually register the window class before calling create window. And this basically sets all kinds of properties about the window. So you can see I just pass in a pointer to a structure. And let's open up this structure so we understand what exactly it contains. The first property is going to be the style. I'm actually not interested in using any class style, so I'm just going to specify zero for the first one. Afterwards, we pass in a pointer to the window procedure. For more information, we're going to check out the window procedure page. And this is the basic syntax of the window procedure, so I'm just going to define it above my entry point. First parameter is going to be a handle to the window. Second parameter, the message. Additional message information, wparam, and more additional message information. Inside of this window procedure, currently I'm just going to call a default window procedure. So I'm going to go here to the category of windows and messages. And here let's search for default window procedure. We're going to use the ASCII version of this. Now let's go back to the window class structure and I'm going to pass the window procedure to the specific member of the structure relating to the window procedure. Afterwards we have another member talking about number of extra bytes to allocate. I'm just going to put this as zero and also this one can be zero. Afterwards we have the handle to the instance that contains the window procedure. For this, I'm going to actually pass the handle from the H instance, one of the parameters on my entry point. Afterwards, we have the icon, but you can see that I can just specify this as null. In that case, the system provides a default icon. Afterwards, the cursor. Again, this can be null. And here we have the background, the brush. If you just scroll down, you can see that this can also be null in which case it's, it's just going to tell us that we're responsible for actually painting our background. We have the menu here, it can be null as well. Finally, we have the class name. This will be the actual identifier of the class. For this, I'm just going to put whatever I want. After I finish setting this up, let's go back to the register class function. And all I got to do is just pass a pointer to the structure. After calling register class, I'm going to go to my next function, which is going to be create window. And this will actually create the window. Notice that there's a bug here in the syntax. Currently, it says that this actually returns void. But in reality, it actually returns a handle to the window. I actually submitted a pull request that was accepted into the repository on GitHub. And soon it will just be fixed here. First parameter is going to be the class name we just registered.
Second parameter is going to be the window name. Afterwards, we have a style parameter. We can check out the styles available in this link. Let's use the WS caption style to get the title bar. I'm going to add more than one style, and I'm going to do this using OR, as you can see right over here. Let's scroll down a little bit to check out more styles. I'm going to use also the pop-up style. Now I'm also going to use the WS sys menu style. That way I'll get a nice window menu on my title bar. Let's go back to the create window function. After style, we indicate the X and Y. Start at 50-50, for example. Afterwards, we have the width. Let's make it 500. Height as well. Afterwards, we have the handle to the parent window. But I'm just going to make this a pop-up window, so this will be actually optional. So I'm just going to pass in null for this. Afterwards, we have the menu. I'm just going to specify null here. Afterwards, we pass in the handle to the instance of the module. Finally, last parameter is going to be LP param. This is optional, so I can just pass null. As you can see right over here, the type of the return is going to be hwnd. And you can see that if the function succeeds, the return value is a handle to the new window. Now let's go to the category of windows and messages. Let's search for the function show window. Now I'm going to actually call show window to show the window on the screen. First parameter is going to be a handle to the window. Second one is ncmd show. This just controls how the window is to be shown. But as you can see here, the first time is called, we should just use the value obtained in the entry point with the ncmd show parameter. Let's just pass that. I'll just remind you that it's this parameter, the last parameter in the entry point. After calling show window, we can finally start our actual message loop. So I'm going to go back here to the category of windows and messages. I'm going to search for get message. As you can see, this actually retrieves a message from the calling threads message queue. So this will be useful to actually handle the messages incoming. So I'm going to start an infinite loop here. I'm going to start by getting the next message. First parameter is going to be a pointer to the message structure. So I'm just going to define it right over here. Second parameter is a handle to the window whose messages are to be received. We can see that we can just keep this as null and then it retrieves messages for any window that belongs to the current thread and also messages to the current threads message queue, which have null in the handle value. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm just going to get all the messages. Afterwards, you have a filter value. We can see how we can specify both the minimum and maximum filter be, be zero, and then it'll just return all available messages. That's what I'm going to do in this case. Also, let's take a look at the return value here. If the function retrieves the quit message, the return value is going to be zero. So let's handle that case. And if we get the quit message, I'm just going to break from the loop so we can finally exit our program. Any other case, I'm just going to dispatch the message. And this is another function I'm going to call. Back to the category. Let's take a look at dispatch message. 
By the way, I'm gonna use the get message a function just to keep all this code working with the ASCII versions to keep it consistent. Same parameters, so no need to change anything. Afterwards, I'm gonna call dispatch message a. And as we can see, this actually dispatches a message to the window procedure. So this is important to call after we're calling get message. And we're gonna pass a pointer to the message structure. Also in a lot of examples, you'll see before calling dispatch message, they're calling translate message, but I'm not gonna do it this here since calling translate message is only necessary if you're planning to handle keyboard messages. I'm not planning to do that in my program. Now let's go back to the window procedure and I'm gonna add a little bit of logic inside. Let's go back here to the category of windows and messages. And I'm gonna open the general guide for windows and messages right over here. I'm gonna to go to the window procedures section and I'm gonna click on using window procedures. Here we can see a nice code example of how a window procedure typically looks like, a basic one. And let's take a little inspiration from this example. We're not gonna handle all of these cases, but handling the pain event is important and handling the destroy event is also important. So let's make a switch case, something like this. We're gonna start by opening up a new switch case and this will run on the U message parameter. And here I'm gonna actually check the event that was sent to the window procedure. First one I'm gonna check is WN paint. Currently I'll just return zero, but later I'm gonna actually implement this. Next one is gonna be case of WM destroy. And in case I got a destroy event, I wanna actually quit my application. So for this, I can use the post quit message function. So let's open it up right over here. You can see that even in the description, it's saying that it's typically used in response to a WN destroy message. So this is great for our case, just call post quit message, pass in the exit code. I'm just gonna post in the exit code zero. And this will actually cause get message to return zero and finally our application will exit. And let's add another default case here. And in the default case, I'm just gonna return the default window procedure. Finally, let's handle the paint event. And for this, I'm gonna to go to the Windows API category. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna to go to the section talking about graphics, specifically Windows GDI. Here we have all kinds of functions. I'm specifically gonna search for the function that draws a rectangle on the screen. So I'm gonna search for fill rect. I'm gonna open this up. You can see how we have a couple of parameters here that we need to initialize. First one is gonna be the handle to the device context. So we understand we need to call another function to actually get the device context. So I'm gonna go back to the category. Let's search for get DC to actually get the device context. This just gets a handle to the window. And this one we have in the first parameter in the window procedure. Afterwards, back to the fill rect function. Second parameter is gonna be a pointer to the rectangle structure. And this will actually represent the actual dimensions I wanna draw. I'm gonna start on 50, 50, for example, or maybe 75. Up until 250. By the way, another important thing, after calling get DC, when you're finished using it, let's call release DC, just to make sure that we're collecting the garbage. And this is especially important in this function because this will be called a lot of times. So if you don't release the resources inside of here, it's just gonna make the window slower and slower and it's gonna make, and it's gonna make everything slower. So make sure you're garbage collecting inside of here.
Now let's go back to fill rect. First, I'm going to pass the device context and a pointer to the rectangle. Finally, we have the actual brush we want to use for the rectangle. Brush is basically how we want to paint the rectangle. And this we can use a function. Let's go back to the category of GDI. For the brush function, I'm going to search for create solid brush. And this actually creates a brush for us. All we have to do is just specify a color. And we can see that to specify the color, we can just use the RGB macro. I'm going to use a blue color. And this will return an H brush. Now let's go back to fill rect. And that's going to be the last parameter I'm going to pass. Just one last thing, let's go back to the create solid brush function. And after creating and finishing using it, I'm going to actually clean it. And I'm going to do this using the delete object function. Now let's test out this application. So for this, I'm going to open the Visual Studio build tools. Specifically, after installing Visual Studio, he'll have a native tools command prompt. So I'm going to open it and navigate to my folder. And I'm going to run the Microsoft Visual Studio compiler, which is CL. First, I'm going to pass the C file. Additionally, I'm going to also pass two library files. I'm going to need to actually get access to these function. And first one is going to be, let's go, for example, to register class that we use in our code. If you go here to the section that talks about the requirements in the documentation, you can see that it tells us which library it comes from. And I'm going to specify this, user32.lib. Also, the GDI functions, some of them come from another library. So I'm going to go, for example, to the documentation of the delete object function. I'm going to go here to the requirements. And as you can see, we also need gdi32.lib. Now let's go ahead and run the executable. And you can see we have a rectangle on the screen. Subscribe for more programming videos, and thanks for watching.